Critical system thinking and sociological paradigms. Is critical system thinking useful for implementing total quality management? I think this is an interesting question because total quality management is a holistic management method that's focused on how to improve uh, organizational performance through customer satisfaction and things. And, and, um, well, and, but what the literature says when Antikium fails, it also often has to do with uh, with manipulative management, um, of culture of fear, of oppression, and I think the sort of thing that uh, critical system thinking is uh, designed is focused on how to improve. So I think there is a natural flow from the left side of this diagram towards the right, where we have this beyond TQM theory by Robert Flood from 1993. And this also remains relevant today, not least through the work of John Beckford, who wrote a a book on quality management in 2022, where it continues <coughs> to argue how the CST is uh, relevant for, uh, useful for implementing total quality management. Now, critical system thinking is a combination of, of system thinking and uh, critical theory. And critical theory is a combination of Freud and Marx in a way it's uh, both uh, it's uh, psychological and political and uh, from the psychological perspective it starts by asking people at the bottom of the organization uh, how they are how they are understanding their situation uh, whether they feel oppressed or not and often when discussed with people they say that well the organization is so and so uh, so the the three commitments to <coughs> CST is the first one is critical awareness. You have to help people out of this false consciousness by developing a critical awareness and then put them on the emancipatory journey. And in order to succeed with the emancipatory journey, it's necessary to apply a wide variety of methods which may be based on different sort of uh, sociological paradigms, which is illustrated here with the Beryl Morgan um, paradigm matrix. On the right side uh, on the, of matrix, we see the objective philosophers' paradigms, which is, represents the way economists, natural scientists, and engineers think about the world. On the left side, we have the subjective side, which is more uh, typical of how, uh, how psychologists and um, literature scholars understand the world through by focusing on meaning. <coughs> on the bottom, on bottom, we have the regulation. Is more typical of how managers are concerned with regulation and control on the upper side we have the workers perspective on uh, social justice and how to, uh, how to how that could be solved so critical system thinking is uh, is placed uh, is placed by Baron Morgan on this uh, upper left upper left uh, quadrant because the subjective uh, aspect is concerned with false consciousness and the uh, radical change uh, corresponds with this idea about em emancipation. In order to turn uh, critical system thinking into a uh, method, uh, which was uh, uh, the central focus point, is the metaphor, uh, at least in the case of TQM, uh, in the TQM theory. The metaphor is um, found between the paradigm and the theory or methodology. For each of those four paradigms on the previous side, there are different uh, metaphors, and for each metaphor, there are different methodologies. For instance, if you look at the metaphor of the organization being like a prison or a psychic prison, um, that fits with uh, that uh, fits with one specific paradigm, namely the uh, radical humanist paradigm. But there are different. If you move downwards, there are different sorts of methodologies where critical system heuristics by could be one of those methods. Here's what total systems intervention, this particular method, looks like. At the center of the circle we have the, the mess, that is the unarticulated uh, problematic uh, situation. So the first thing they do is a step called creativity, where the, the idea is to create a metaphor for framing the mess. The second step is called choice, and by using this metaphor, uh, the idea is to decide on how to deal with the mess. Thirdly, we have the implementation, implementation of the method, which uh, produces results that have to be evaluated and decide on what to do next. 
So, um, in turning to this diagram again, the total systems intervention is placed when in the radical is uh, bound is um, is at home in the radical humanist paradigm. But once we choose these uh, various metaphors, we we move into the other uh, other um, paradigms temporarily to solve parts of the problem and return to the radical humanist paradigm again. Oh, why has a CSC-driven theoretical quantum not been more successful? That's a question I have been asking myself lots of times. And uh, I, I, I've, uh, because uh, I think this book by Robert Flood is a really uh, is a fantastic book, really. It's fun, uh, especially the theoretical part is absolutely brilliant. It's excellent. But on the other hand, on the other hand when we look at the um, empirical part, the, the four case studies he presents, there are, there are some cause for worry. I feel because there are certain patterns that uh, are, are somewhat striking. The first thing is that he is working as an, extel, uh, an ex external consultant, addressing entering into client organizations from the top, making commitments with top management, while his interest, political interests are with those at the bottom of the organization. So when he's uh, doing this TSI uh, method, which starts with selecting metaphors, it's, uh, I would be somewhat surprised if the managers would do this use method, uh, metaphors like the prison or instrument of domination for describing their own organizations. And there is also the third, third uh, thing about how, uh, how they decide, how Jackson and Flood decide on which method to use. They use something called the system of systems methodology framework, which does not really depend on, uh, on the metaphors. So they sort of shortcut this uh, idea from the parallel Morgan matrix, which is a bit, a bit strange, uh, I think. However, I think it's easy, not not so uh, difficult to change all of this to make this uh, TSI make more sense if you simply uh, look at it from the viewpoint of community operational research. In that case, the creativity uh, step starts by um, is making um, finding the metaphor. If the um, you have to do that from the viewpoint of the community, which means that the consultant has to be an internal. Um, a TQM consultant and the viewpoint of management is not so important. And then we move to the choice step, which method to use. We should use the Beryl Morgan matrix directly because that links uh, directly with the, um, with the metaphors rather than this uh, SOSM, which is a, a total mistake in my opinion. And thirdly, we have this implementation of the method. Then I think it's important that we, that we follow the plan, do, check, act logic to prevent management from suddenly intervening and uh, terminating the process because it does not fit with their, uh, their interests. So now to illustrate this, I have this example or what is a case study in the, in the paper. And I start with, uh, before starting the plan, do, check, act, I want to start with the initial uh, metaphor and that is the CST, the basic uh, CST metaphor uh, of the organization being an instrument of domination or what we see on this picture on the far right with the hand pushing down on the man on the, on the floor. Because we, we are interested in viewing the organization from the viewpoint not of the hand pushing down but on the man lying on the floor. So we go through this first step of planning. This is seen from the viewpoint of the powerless. Although these people may look at the organization, uh, may not uh, be in total agreement on what the organization uh, is like and how what the solution might be. So we start with this metaphor about text, There's something that's open for, for interpretation. And that leads to something like, for instance, the uh, soft systems methodology here illustrated by, the, by a rich picture. Uh, we have all sorts of, of uh, positive images uh, trying to uh, create, uh, describe uh, what the problem is and what the solution might uh, might be. Now, uh, I think it's interesting. Checkland, he he did not work like this, or he mostly worked through top management, so he was concerned. But on the other hand, in his book, he explained that there should be no really. Uh, no challenge really in, in how to it could easily be used from the viewpoint of 
labor unions or political activists because the problem is only how to create a shared vision, uh, a common understanding of what the problem is. But after the uh, problem has been articulated and the strategy has been uh, also articulated, then the, then the next step is how to make an intervention a testable intervention so we know whether the intervention works or not. And meaning that we have to move into the functionalist paradigm where there are different sort of uh, the objective side, we want to make an objective intervention. Uh, well, different sort of metaphors, and I've chosen this uh, cybernetic systems metaphor, the brain metaphor, uh, which could be illustrated by the work by Stafford Beer in Chile, trying to help Salvadorians in creating an, a, a, a socialist economy in the early 1970s, which was, of course, uh, broke down because of the Pinochet coup d'etat. Uh, so that was a failure. But so this is a very interesting uh, case which has been written about and continues to serve as inspiration for um, much research. Uh, after doing the thing, we have to check. In this particular case, uh, when, the, when the intervention was a failure, then the check is uh, obvious. But even if the, the, the case had been a success, it's, in, it's in a technical success, it's interesting to look at check from the radical humanist paradigm in the sense of whether people, uh, the people involved are now being, um, have become critically aware and are on an emancipatory journey. Uh, a way of addressing those kind of problems we could use something like the critical systems heuristics method by Werner Ulrich, which consists of creating a debate based on a certain set of problems. <coughs> Here illustrated in the famous 1970 debate between Michel Foucault and Noam Chomsky, asking questions, what is the world is? What, what is it like at present and what, and how, what it ought to be? So that is the, the central um, conflict between what it is and what it ought to be. After having uh, done that and evaluated, checked, uh, checked and discussed, studied the, uh, the intervention from that perspective, then we come to the next, uh, the final step of acting, meaning what do you do then? And I think that here it is important to move into the radical, the, the radical structures paradigm because we're not only interested in how people are feeling, whether they have been developed a critical awareness, but we're interested in the objective uh, emancipation, whether there have been structural changes. So here we have, for instance, in the case of the Black Lives Matter, clearly people are motivated, they are critically aware, they're demonstrating on the streets, but uh, has the problem of systematic systemic oppression been solved, or should we? Is it necessary to make another round around this plan to check? So now there are two lessons to be learned from this uh, study. I, I believe the first one has to do with the structure, and I believe the plan to check act has to play a much more important um, part in uh, in um, when CST is used for implementing total quality management, and it is used for. Um, each of these four steps, plan, do, check, act, you have to run this TSI through different, uh, each of the four paradigms. Like in the planning, you need interpretivism for articulating the problem. In the doing, you need functionalism for making testable interventions to check, as consists of looking at the uh, issue of critical awareness, whether that has been established or not. And when the act, when the decision at the act, and we have to look at the objective world of whether um, what are the consequences of uh, emancipation from a objective perspective. However, the second lesson I think is uh, is the is more important, and that is what what I believe the key is, is perhaps even more important. That's the idea of moving. Um, critical system thinking and total system intervention from the radical humanist perspective into the radical structuralist paradigm. That means to uh, to found it on um, community operational research, uh, and this fits 
in, uh, as I can see, very interestingly with how Stahl has been writing, has been talking about the uh, Battle Morgan uh, grid in recent years. He has also done the same thing as he has um, in, in um, while uh, Battle Morgan talking about critical theory from the up, in the upper left corner as part of the um, radical humanist perspective. Uh, Stavel de defined it as part of the structuralist, uh, radical structuralism, and I agree. I think it's a very important and good point, and because it makes us think about critical theory more in less in terms of Adorno, Horkheimer, and Habermas, but more in terms of how Marcuse uh, influence took part in political activism in the 1960s and early 1970s. So. Is CST useful for implementing total TQM? I believe it is very much so, but it has to be a re depends on a re on the reorientation of uh, CST towards COR. The critical system thinking is useful for implementing total quality management when reoriented towards community organizational research as an illustrated picture.